Hi, I'm Chef Don, and today we're making venison stew. I know that some of you have this venison that is sitting in your freezer wondering what would be an ideal one to do, and this is perfect. And we're going to show you how to make it easy. So first of all, we need certain ingredients, and these ingredients will add to the flavor as it's cooking. We have a canned tomatoes, we have some diced celery, we also have some diced onions, Worcestershire sauce, carrots, beef stock, potatoes, this is a meat potato dish, some flour, garlic for it to taste even better, salt and pepper, and of course, the center of the plate, we have venison. So I have a nice back strap of venison here, so it's gonna cook up very quickly and be ever so tasty. So before I do that, I wanna get my vegetables cooking because as I cook the vegetables, they'll saute and the sugar will come out of them and just make them taste so good. And that's what we do because everything is about the flavor, right? So we're gonna turn on our cooker and let it get hot just a little bit. And we're gonna to add to that, we have some olive oil. So we'll just sprinkle some olive oil in there. And then once it smokes a little bit, you'll see that in just a little bit, we'll add the vegetables and cook them. So we're gonna put our onions in there. And then we're gonna add other root vegetables. I like to add the root vegetables first because those are a little bit harder and take a little bit longer to cook and they have a little less moisture in them. So I'm putting in some celery. And of course, this being a stew, you could add or delete certain vegetables as you would wish. Give that a little bit of a stir. And we're gonna add in now some carrots. So there's some diced carrots. And carrots are sweet, so when they cook, they're gonna add another flavor to it. So while that's sauteing in our pan, let's go ahead and get our venison ready. So as I said, this is a back strap from the, from the venison. It's a nice, beautiful piece here. As I cut it, you will see how tender this meat is. I mean, it is just waiting to be cooked and consumed. So I'm gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. Whenever you do a stew, you gotta think about how it's gonna be served and in this case, most people eat a stew with a spoon. Some people with a fork, but usually a spoon, so it should be the right size to fit on a spoon, and of course, the right size to fit into the mouth, because they're not using a knife and a fork. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut that. Notice when I hold my knife, I hold it correctly, like that, with my four fingers and my thumb. Lots of times, people hold their knives like that, which does not give you a lot of control. So control is very important. So we just slice our venison that way and if it's a little bit bigger you start to get cut it into small we're looking at something like about one inch uh, dice would be fine on the meat also if you're using a tougher cut of meat uh, this stew is a great dish just let it cook for a little bit longer and the meat will come together and be so flavorful let's give our vegetables another little stir and they're getting so happy in there Okay, a little bit more, but we still have time. We're going to season, and the seasoning, very simple, salt and pepper. About a half a teaspoon of pepper and about a teaspoon of salt. And of course, you can always add more salt later, so try not to over salt your meat. And the next thing we want to do is to dust it with flour. This is all-purpose flour, and the reasoning for this is it coats the meat, keeps the juices inside, it also adds a thickening factor, because when we make a stew, we want to have some of that liquid that's nice and thick and tasty. So we'll put some flour in there as well. Keeping an eye on our vegetables that are just doing so lovely in there. You'll notice in just a minute or two that the vegetables will start browning, and that doesn't mean they're burning. What it means is that the sugar is coming out and hitting the bottom of the pan. And once it does that, it actually is developing flavor. So you see, we lightly dredge, this is called dredging, lightly dredge our seasoned meat cubes and just flour. And now it's ready to be sauteed in just a minute, but first of all, we wanna take a pinch into these vegetables. Okay, so now the vegetables are softening up and as they're softening, the moisture that is naturally in there is being released and hitting the pan. So at this point, we're going to add some garlic. See, I tend not to add the garlic at the beginning because garlic burns very easily. 
And of course, we don't want anything burnt in our dish. This is a garlic press. This one slices on one side and presses on the other. And I'm just going to press the garlic right into our pot. And then as it's cooking in there, it will add some more flavor. And of course, if you like to see the garlic, you can chop it into bigger pieces. But this one works just fine when you're pressing it. Now we are going to add potatoes, but not right away. So you see them sitting here. They will be added in a little while after the meat cooks just a little bit. Because if you put the potatoes in too soon, they overcook. And then you have mushy potatoes, and we like to have potatoes that are not quite mushy. Okay, I can smell that garlic. It is just perfuming the air that I'm standing here. So what I'm going to do now is to remove the vegetables from our pan, and then we're going to saute the meat. As you can see, they're lightly brown, smelling just wonderful. So this is an important step in making a stew. I know some people like to do like one pot type of thing. And of course, they can dump it and then just walk away. But in this case, this is what we call cooking. And we are all about flavor. Okay, so we take out the vegetables that have already been sauteed, add in the rest of our oil, turn it back on, let it get hot just a little bit, and then we're gonna add in our venison. So with the venison, we're gonna brown it. So we've got the heat on high. Okay, it's, it's important that we're not, we're not just letting it stew now. We're going to let it stew later, but right now we want that venison to uh, brown. And as it's browning, the proteins will stick to the bottom of the pan. Those proteins are what's going to add more flavor to this dish. Okay. So, looks like it needs a little bit more oil, so we'll just do that. I'm using olive oil. You may use other types of oils if you wish. Okay, so now the fawn has developed in the bottom of our pot. Uh, the meat is nice, nicely browned. I can just show you some of it. We just want it to be brown all the way around. It definitely will not be cooked all the way through. There'll be a little bit of redness in it, and that's quite all right. So at this point, we're going to add in our beef stock and it will go right to the bottom of the pot and I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping, a little removing that fawn from the bottom of the pot. They actually call this deglazing. This is deglazing the pot. So that glaze that was stuck on the bottom is now coming up and becoming one with the sauce. And this is so important in making a good sauce, okay? We're gonna put in there some canned tomatoes. They're chopped canned tomatoes. Putting them in there with the juice. We're going to put back the rest of our vegetables. Remember, we sauteed those to bring out the flavor. Put those right into the dish. Okay. Here's the rest of our stock. And I'm going to add in a little bit more tomatoes. So at this point, we're going to bring this to a boil and then reduce it to the simmer. But we've got one more flavor to add to it, and that's Worcestershire sauce. Just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, but an extra little kick in there. Now, as I said, if we need more salt and pepper, of course, we will test it uh, as it's cooking up. But at this point, it's going to cook on the top of the counter. And as soon as it starts to boil, I'm going to cover it and then reduce it to a simmer and let it cook. Uh, this particular dish should take anywhere from a half an hour to maybe an hour to cook, depending on the tenderness of the meat that you're cooking. Well, let's see how the stew is doing. Oh man, just smell that wonderful. Oh, okay. So the meat is cooked up pretty nice. Vegetables are cooking beautifully. Now it's time to add the potatoes. So let's go ahead and put those in. Give it a little bit of a stir. Cover it in about maybe 10, 15 minutes. It'll be time for stew. Well, our stew is ready to serve. 
So first I want to get a little garnish and I have here some fresh parsley. And what I'm gonna do with the parsley is just roll it into a ball in my hand, just like this. Place it on the cutting board and then with our French knife or chef knife, just slice down and mince the fresh parsley. There's nothing like fresh parsley, so don't substitute the dried variety. It has no flavor at all, and this has lots of good flavor. Okay, so let's see our stew. Doing very nice. Let's turn it off. And I have our serving bowl. So we want to spoon in all of the goodness, potatoes, stew, all that good juice that's in there that's added so much flavor to our venison stew. Some chopped fresh parsley and dinner is served all in one dish. All right, let's just taste it and see. Mmm, perfect. Ready to serve right now, but tomorrow it'll be even better.